Hey everyone, Max at 343 Labs here. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, the one and only John Selway, which is taken from his weekly stream, which airs right here on our channel. Now, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification below. Let's get into it. But yeah, this groove, kind of spacey, kind of organic, kind of, kind of deep. We'll see how much more pumping it gets. And then, you know, it's mostly just some basic percussion, some reverb, some effects. Some syncopated stuff going on with the kick. I was actually thinking about uh, have a little bit of break like that. There's still a kick in there. But it's kind of in the background, right? And then how well this works. I mean, I want to keep this kind of stripped down and minimal and not add too much more to it. At least I want to get the arrangement going before I think about what else to add. Because I want it to really center around this groove. So, you know, what's happening with the sound is it's this kind of percussive. I, I was experimenting with the granular engine, right? The new granular engine inflation, uh, in phase plant. And then I have, there's a, it's basically playing a chord. And I was playing around with the amount of modulation of this range. So as like, as the, the grains jump around, they're getting uh, tuned to a, a chord. And then the, the higher the range is, the more bright and the more high notes we're gonna hear. And that's gonna be most of the track right there is just playing around with that. drum there. I mean, I lost the downbeat there for a second. Too much reverb on that hi-hat, but I like it. Mike Harding is saying the DAW sound is still not good. I thought we fixed it. Well, we're just going to roll with it. Again, we're not going to do the full hour today, I'm sorry. So we'll put up with what we got to put up with. All right, so that's what's happening. Um, a lot of times for a track like this, I'll use automation or real-time control to kind of guide uh, the arrangement. I kind of want to jam it a little bit. I could just go in and lay it all out, um, you know, linear. Um, but I, for more hypnotic, deep techno, I like to kind of improvise and sort of play with the knobs, as it were. Um, you know, like it's uh, not necessarily like a hardware workflow because I'm in the box here, but, but even just using a trackpad or a mouse to like move the parameters around just to have something to play with, to give it a shape. Um, and kind of like jam it out live a little bit. So like, I just want to play with this loop for a little while. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'm recording now. And then everything I do in the arrangement, I mean, sorry, everything I do in the session view, any parameters I tweak, any sends I automate, you know, any kind of sounds, any stuff that I play with is going to get captured in here. And I'm not going to worry too much about how perfect my arrangement is because I can go back and fix it if I mess it up. And there's all, also, you can hear there's a little bit of modulation going on in that sound. Every now and there's a little kind of variation it sort of pops and is more percussive and there's like a slow LFO in there that's doing that sometimes like that you just hear that little accent and I like to build the things like that into the groove so even if you're not doing anything it still sounds like something's happening how long has that been so far I mean 32 bars and we could bring in the hi-hat why not Really keeping this simple. Let, letting the sound just kind of bubble and do its thing. Okay. This is where I really should have, 
I, I, this always happens. I'm like, I need a MIDI controller today. Where is the MIDI controller? No idea. So I just moved that knob a little bit <laughs> just to like do that chord up higher. And, and it was a nice variation. So let's try to do that again. Really simple. Bring in another. Uh, maybe it was a little too much. I should have put it in the more simple version of that, but I'm not going to second guess myself. I'm just going to let it be what it is. Play around with that chord automation a little bit more. And the kick drum's been going for a little while. Now I can bring in this a little bit more. It's okay. I feel like I need another layer of energy though soon. Something has to change. Like the more quickly I build it up, the more there needs to be happening. It could also be some of that stuff. I don't mind that. I feel like I can't go up too much farther. It's going to get a little too too bubbly, I don't know. Alright, so that's like a... Like, obviously the timing of that was not good. But, the idea is there and I can go back and edit, fix it, or fill in stuff that needs to be there. I have this noisy clap thing. Let's see what happens if I bring that one. Probably too quiet. Yeah. That could have snuck in a little earlier rather than just started like. But also the mix is maybe not quite right. I think the kick drum could be louder, I don't know. That, that automation, the mix automation, I'm not recording right now. Actually, now that I think about it, I might not have been, uh-oh. <laughs> I just realized that this is something, you know, it's a teachable moment. If you're gonna do this kind of recording in the arrangement with automation, make sure that button is on. So that's a, that's a mistake that I shouldn't make. So all of this stuff I was doing, that's all lost now. I have to go back and do it again. Kind of like that breakdown. How long have I been recording for? Like, this track should be over by now. I mean, it's so simple, it doesn't need to be longer than like five minutes, six minutes. All right, so I'm not gonna totally wait, even though I forgot to engage the automation, so I didn't record any of that tweaking, I don't care. <laughs> We're just gonna let this be the structure, and then we'll go back and do the automation and the arrangement view, rather than waste time recording it all again. That's going to be the end. We're going to fix this. We're just sketching the outline. 
right? Like, I just want to get a shape down that, you know, we can use as our structure and then refine it from there. Interesting with the echo at the end there. All right, so that was a little rough, but that's okay. I'm just making, I'm just trying to rescue this stream today. We started off so uh, off kilter with my uh, audio interface freaking out on me. Okay, so that whole thing, anyway, you get the concept, right? The idea is that it was, uh, I'm bringing parts in and out. Um, sometimes I don't even do that. Sometimes I'll just let the kick drum, just use the kick drum in a synth only. And then let the synth or whatever that part is that's being varied with automation and tweaking, like um, let that define the structure and then go in and add stuff. But in this case, just to like kind of save even more time, um, I started, you know, throwing in the other percussion elements just to get an idea. Um, and I think the whole idea, the whole, you know, for me, breaking out of the loop and forcing yourself, because a lot of times it's hard to decide when should I make these changes? Uh, and you know, if, if, if you've got a groove going, whether you're working with hardware or just, you know, it's the same kind of concept. There's just a bunch of loops going, right. And you're bringing things in and out and you're tweaking the sounds and you're changing parameters in real time. Just kind of hit, don't even worry about it. Just hit record and see what happens and don't worry about performing perfectly. Just like, let it, let it happen. You can always go back and kind of, uh, fix it. You might discover happy accidents along the way. Like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but it sounded cool. Like, and then you have it. You might not have ever done that if you didn't try and, and see what happened. So but now I got to fix this, right? I, I recorded it. I was supposed to record it with automation, but I forgot to turn this button on, the automation arm. So it didn't capture any of it. So now, you know, let's do that. Let's make sure we're looking at the, oh, no, it did get some of it. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. I am so off off my game today. Never mind. All right. Forget what I said about the automation. Rewind. Let's go back to the beginning and listen. Let's see what we need to do to fix this to make it a little bit better. Now, I am going to... Since I did actually end up recording volume automation changes, I want to get rid of those. good and maybe it takes a little bit too long for stuff to happen I like that little rim shot happening but maybe it happens a little too often so let's make it uh, every two bars instead of every bar. Or maybe just drop them in there sometimes. So now we're kind of switching over to more linear arranging flow. Yeah, I'm not even sure that needs to be there. if we bring this a little hi-hat in earlier. I'm okay with that. That little rim shot I did not I did not mind, but we're going to leave that all by itself. Okay. Here comes the hi-hat, the main hi-hat. Wait on that rim shot. I almost want that to be louder now because it's just not happening. Since it's not happening regularly, it can just stick out sometimes. Here we go with the... Now, I liked that little thing. 
I try to do this and not stop too much because I want to get into the groove as if I'm still jamming. But I like that little thing, so I'm going to have that happen again sooner. Because I spaced them out more when I was playing around live, playing around in real time. have another that one remember I wasn't sure about that let's see how we feel about that what happens if we get rid of the hi-hat nope that's the wrong one anyway I am okay with it, just having it go here. I mean, it's already two minutes, right? We do want to be getting some more energy going. Maybe just a little bit loud. This I like. But maybe I want that change in the chord or the melodic percussion to be a little bit more full on and right away. Because I like this pattern. So maybe I should just do that. Just straight away and not be like uh, easing into it. So yeah, you can just cut and paste automation like you would clips. Just that one little part has a lot of energy. Like when you take it away at the wrong time, it maybe feels like it loses something. Or maybe I need to add something there. I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it go for now. And let's also get rid of that rim shot. Let's see, uh, Oxygen Levels Critical said this is Phase Plant doing the bongos. It's like the melodic percussion, yeah. And I have to be really careful about automating that chord amount because like the groove changes so much. Oh, that was kind of cool. Just to have a little bit of a, at the right, at the right at the very end of that section, have it kind of freak out a little bit. due to this sound while it's playing that's not just the chord thing i mean it's kind of a dark like it doesn't the sound doesn't ever get bright and big could play with the amount of reverb it's kind of underwater sounding as it is there's also the you can see there's the the grain positions moving around so I can get a little bit noisier later on, which is kind of cool. That's actually good. There's 
the grain envelope length. It gets fuller. Might get a little messy that way though. These are all other things I could think about automating. stuck you hear me getting stuck i'm like what's going on all right i'm just listening right now and is, i'm just feeling is it hypnotizing me is it sucking me in with this. Let's see what happens. If where when the kick drum comes back is a little bit more sub. I'm okay with that. All right. Where's that up main high? terms of the reverb, I'm going to back up a little bit. And let's give that some variation. Okay. had the wrong track but I, I like that anyway I might have been squashing the the transient of this hi-hat a little bit too much a little 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 bit sharper backing up on that threshold a little bit so I had the idea, maybe I want to just do that typical 909, like controlling the decay of the hi-hat thing right there, but this is a sample. So maybe I can, you know, I could just, this is like just a pretty generic closed hi-hat sample. Maybe I want to replace this with uh, something where I can play around. It's got a little bit more to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into the live 909 closed hi-hat rack instrument yeah i want to have this you know i'm trying to this is kind of hardware style uh groove where i'm not having a lot of different layers but i'm controlling each one you know by tweaking the sounds um So like now that's a little heavier there because the decay is longer. A little scrapey sounding. Maybe I want to thin it out. Take out some of the lows from, you know, high pass that sound a little bit. Still too much reverb maybe. like variations in the drums. I feel like this could be more velocity sensitive. I want there to be more of a difference between the high and the low one, which we can fix pretty quickly right here. Yeah, bring the volume down a little bit. It's sort of more bouncy now, I like that. How 
much you can do just with playing with a hi-hat. It's amazing. note but not a little bit shorter and it, it's the groove is changing nicely with the more busy synth on the top where's the kick drum all right rather than cut the kick drum out for a long time there like i did before let's uh have it come back in but i'm gonna get i have i've had these extra syncopated ones there the whole time let's get rid of those and have it just be more straight and then i originally had it at about 48 percent on the uh, decay Okay. Where did we bring in the clap, the noisy clappy thing? Maybe this should, okay, I remember I thought about it. Maybe it could sneak in instead of just starting in. Let's see. Not sure about that. What can we do to this? This was kind of, I remember this was kind of a questionable sound when we first uh, tried this out. Maybe tighter is better? How does it sound if we start like this, start low, and then sneak it up? out there that was kind of cool there's also playing around with the, the decay I don't know do I want it to just start and be strong from the beginning all right let's try get rid of that automation altogether. Oh, oh, I forgot to check. There's this automation going on where it just kind of drops down before the kick drum comes back. Let's listen to this section, actually. that change right there. It's funny, it's these subtle little things. Because you hear like the syncopation changes. And that could be cool at the right moment. Um, but in this case, 
I'm just gonna put it back to that lower level and then we'll see what happens here. That's a little better. One more and then it should come back. Duplicate that over. Oops. Cut and paste automation like clips. All right, that needs to go back here. Ah, yeah, yeah, there we go. Something else should drop out there too. I think I'm just gonna let this come in bright. Why not? It's a new thing. I like that. We're trading some hi-hats for the clap, the filtery weird clap. Maybe also we go back to a shorter closed hi-hat. It's shorter 909 clothes. There's some other closed hi-hats in here. Isn't there another? Where's the faster one? That one. I should put that one back. good. I want it to be a little shinier. A little, oh man, it's. I say I want it to be shinier, but it's already really bright. Maybe it needs like a flanger on it or something to be trippy, sweeping around, stereo. Alright, that wasn't right. That wasn't right, the timing of that, was it? Accidentally. Happy accidents. Too high. Right. Let's try this. I like it better rolling lower. So that level we were at here might go back to that one because I kind of like it. Okay, we're going to fix this, I promise. got to find the right variation. That was not so bad. Hey Penrose Conjecture. Yes, I do remember making a record with Bill Youngman, of course. I'd like to get I'd like to get Bill on the show again. That would be great. He's a good good old pal, fun to talk to, has some cool ideas to share. All right. Where am I? I'm getting distracted. Like this part, just back down to the lower pattern and then the claps 
come in. Oh, we've forgotten about the rim shot all this time. Maybe this is where it should come back in. Need to mix that differently. It's sort of buried, isn't it? I'm not gonna worry about it right now, though. No, this needs to stay low here. I like it. Um, come on, let me, can I just please copy that? Thank you. There we go. I think we need this, the energy should stay up here. Okay, easy fix there is more hi-hats, more bright stuff. And then, you know, bringing that up. All right, so you can tell sometimes when I stop and start, it goes out of sync. So re reset it, make sure it's starting from the first beat. next I wonder hi-hats are gonna change oh you know what we could do that we could bring up the base of the the decay of the kick drum again here uh, like you know depending on the mix and how this translates in the sound system just that extra bit of sub on the kick drum could do a lot gradual increase of the complexity of those chords. Too much jumping around. I think we're going to break it down here. And maybe we're gonna just, this is the end. This is the end, why not? All right, gotta get this transition just right. Let's hear it from the beginning of that, that section. Could be playing around with the Clap. You know, another thing that we could get crazy with is the the reverb on the. There's a vocoder doing noise on that clap. All right, so that's a. This needs to be finessed, but this could be like a nice moment to have that clap kind of with the vocoder noise get a little bit crazy there in that section. Anytime I feel like something needs to happen in the groove, I go in and change some automation on something. Maybe a little too soon. That's a bit too much. All right, 
that still needs work. But I, I, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to make this work. What happens if that just stays up? Is that going to be because we haven't done that the whole track? What happens if this just stays up on those high notes right here where everything else drops out? And I might have to do some like mixing tricks and adding effects and I don't know, like making it something different, tra more transformed into some. I don't know. We'll see. Kind of bringing the decay down on the open hi-hat. Still a little too much on that. Uh... No. No, it's too, it's, every time I've done this, it's funny. Every time I let it, that those chord kind of melodic percussions stay up high, it was like too much. Right, it, the groove works better when it's lower and more integrated with the drums. It's okay in this, you know. I, again, I need to finesse it, but I don't mind it here because it's like supposed to be a little more crazy. And you know, we're spinning around on the carousel here. That's just better. Actually, gonna let's also get rid of those syncopated kicks and just have it be more straight here. Okay. Should we leave the hi hat in? Maybe I don't know. There's this one. It's more simple, which I haven't really used. I think. Oh no, that's the fast one. that one. Forgot about that. That should have come in. That should have come back sooner. I like how sharp and crisp that one, this particular hi-hat is. What if we switch back to this one instead of getting rid of it? like I'm off the grid a little bit. I might have made some of these sections too short or too long. That's something I'm going to have to fix later when I go over the whole structure and, and look at the big picture. Yeah, that's okay. All right, from here. This is good. Real short hi-hat right there. Is that, yeah, it's like right there with the kick and you know, the closed hi-hat right on the quarter notes. build it up again one more time before we end it. And maybe that's too much. What 
what if we take some of the automation from this part and do it here? It's kind of echoing how it starts. drop the kick drum out and we're just going to make this the end. I don't think this needs to be longer than six. It should be less than six minutes. That's going to be it. Okay, that's how long my track is. I mean, this could be almost done. It depends on how raw and underground you want to be. <laughs> like, if you think of this as like, you know, there's plenty of tracks that people do that are like uh, just live jams and they just record it and then that's it. It is what it is. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, we put out new content every week. So don't forget to check back often. And if you'd like to learn more about music production and take a course with us or just join our community, come check us out at 343labs.com. See you next time.